Welcome back. I'm Dr. Angela Siegel, and today we're going to cover strings in Java. If you're following along in our textbook, Big Java Late Objects, you'll find this information in section 2.5. Up until now, we've been looking at various data types, uh, and we've been primarily looking at numbers. And if you follow this chart, you'll see that everything we've considered is under a primitive type. So we looked at different types of integers, byte, short, int, and long. And we've also discussed floating point numbers, uh, which come of data types float and double. Briefly, we discussed characters, and that's of care type. You'll hear people say this, char, care, I say care. Um, one, care sounds like a nice word, and two, it sounds more like the base of character. Uh, but you will hear people call this char as well. That's a philosophical argument that I won't get into. So, so all of these that we've explored have been under this primitive data type. And that is, they are a type of data on their own. But we're going to move over into a new branch, the non-primitive branch. And you'll see under that we have string and arrays. Strings are made up of a sequence of characters. And so this is what we're going to focus on today. Um, arrays, we'll see later, are made up of a sequence of other types. So it could be a sequence of integers, for instance. So for now, uh, we're going to stick with strings. And the string type is exactly what you expect it to be. So in this example, we see that we have a string. Uh, we've given the type. And you'll note that it's a capitalized string. So let's take a look, closer look at the string type. And the first thing we'll know is that when we declare a string variable, we do it basically the same way that we did with integers and floating point types. Um, which is we, we give the data type string, except we have to be really careful to note that the S in string is capitalized. Then we give the variable name. In this case, I've given the variable name, name. And then we set it, uh, we give that initial value. In this case, I've given the initial value, Dr. Angela Siegel. So that's what's held in name. However, this is actually a sequence of characters. So it's a sequence of D, then a lowercase r, then the period, all held behind the scenes as characters. So there are many things that we might wish to do with strings. Um, and the first and most obvious one is to concatenate two strings together, two or more strings together. So you can add strings together by using concatenation. And concatenation is modeled with a plus sign. Uh, so it, it's when we take two strings, string one, string two, and we turn them into a bigger string. And you can see in blue at the bottom, we've got a big string equals string one plus string two. And the result of that would be that we have the whatever is held in string one, and then we push string two up against it. And so it reads left to right, the contents of string one followed by the contents of string two. Uh, so this might be useful if we're, say, we have some information and in one variable we hold the first name of, of a person and in another string we hold their last name. If we add those together, we get their full name. So concatenation uses the plus operator. So it looks like addition um, and we're adding two words together. So it's an easy thing to remember. So words are added together and it's important to remember without any spaces between. So if we have the following strings, my name, first, last, um, and we set first equal to Angela and we set last equal to Siegel, then um, on the, that fourth line there, we see I've set my name equal to first name plus last name. The problem is that concatenation, as I mentioned, does not, uh, it puts the two words together, but it doesn't add any space in between. It assumes that this is exactly what we want. So what's held in my name is Angela Siegel, no space. Of course, we can fix that because we can concatenate in a space. Let's take a quick look at how numbers and strings can play together. So you can concatenate strings and numbers. In fact, if we take 
a, a string movie and we set it equal to oceans plus the number 11, this becomes oceans 11. And, and that's because Java is clever and it, it realizes if you use the plus operator and one of the things that you're adding together is a string, it treats the whole result as a string. So you can make use of concatenation even when you print. Uh, in fact, you can even combine strings and numbers when you print output. This first line would output bond 007 because that seven would be added to the string and, and then it would be printed. We also might make use of this when we, we want to print the contents of a variable. So we might wish to tell the user uh, what something totals, but we want to lace that with information. Um, and so on this last line, you'll see that we let them know that what we're going to present is the total, and then we place the contents of the variable total. Remember that we can also read strings as input, and there's two ways that we can go about doing that. We can either read that input as one word at a time, or we can read the full line, which could contain spaces and tabs and, and all of that white space, uh, everything up until the fact that you get to that, that new line character. So you can read in user input as strings using that scanner object, and you can read in one word at a time in dot next, so if in is our scanner object, we can apply the, the dot next method. Or you can read in the entire next line, which will read in everything until the user hits enter. So you might be tempted to use the cast operator. Um, and casting, um, what I'm suggesting is you might be tempted to use parentheses around int and then give it input. But that doesn't work for strings. And so in this case, we're going to have to use integer.parseInt and supply that string input. So what's important is for integer.parseInt method to work, um, our string input must contain only digits. So it can only contain digits. Otherwise, you'll find that you get an error. So, apologies, I am very cheesy. Uh, so let's look at uh, how we can escape things. For instance, what if I wanna have quotation marks in my string? If I wanted the title of my slide to be what was held in a string, I can see that I want it to hold, I just want to say, quote, hello, quote. The problem is that Java will be reading through this. The compiler will look and see, okay, I see the start of a string literal at that first double quote. And then it's going to see the second double quote and think, all right, I've I found the end. And then it's not going to know what to do with this H-E-L-L-O, quote, quote. Um, and so you would get a compile time error but I wanna use those quotes and there are times that I might want quotation marks in my string. So in order to get around this, we use something called an escape. You can escape the quote, meaning put a backslash before that double quote in order to include it. And so that lets Java know that the, the, the item that follows that backslash is something that I want to actually include in my string and I'm not implying that I'm at the end. I'm not this is a character that I want to have included. And so I just want to say backslash double quote, hello, backslash. Um, it will actually hold. I just want to say double quote, hello, double quote inside my string. So, oh shoot, now I've used a backslash. What if I want to include a backslash? <laughs> so in fact, you can escape the backslash as well. Um, and in fact, uh, if I wanted to, to read this out, I, I would have a string that was C colon backslash. It's only going to hold a single backslash as a character. And so it would read C colon backslash my files backslash my code dot Java. So these escaped characters, the combination of a backslash and an escaped character is called a control sequence. Um, and so there are several different control sequences available to us. 
and uh, they come in many forms. So we have uh, the backslash, we can have backslash backslash results in a backslash, backslash um, double quote gives us the double quote, backslash single quote will give us a single quote in a string, and backslash n, this is a popular one, an important one, uh, results in a new line. Backslash t results in a tab, and backslash asterisk results in the same. So here's an example. What does the following output? So we have system.out.println a backslash nbc backslash ndef double quote. Well, we haven't covered what backslash nbc is or backslash ndef is, um, but if we think back, backslash n means something. And a control sequence only looks at um, the character immediately following the escape. So it's going to be, we are escaping the N. So that backslash N uh, results in a new line. And in fact, the output is just A, new line, B, C, new line, D, E, F, as we see on the screen. So what's in a name? It depends what name is. If name is a string, then what's held within that string is a, a sequence of characters. <coughs> Oh, mommy. <laughs> Each character of type car is a, in a string is assigned an index marking its location in the string. So we can see in my name, Angela, it's made up of six different characters. A, N, G, E, L, A. And the first A, the capital A, is found at index zero. Um, and that's an important thing to note. We start at zero. Um, so that's an important thing to note is that we start at index zero and move on from there. In order to assign a character to a variable, um, we use single quotes around that character. Um, so if you have something of data type car, then you are going to put single quotes around the character you wish it to hold. With strings, as we've discussed, we use double quotes. So let's take a look at some string operations. These are things that we can do with strings that are really useful, and there are many different things. We can compare strings, we can check if one string is equal to another, we can split strings, we can look at uh, the length of a string or replace characters within a string. Uh, and for right now, we're just gonna look at a sampling. Uh, so here are some string operations that we'll want to take a look at. So assume we have a string s. Uh, these are some initial string operations that we will make use of. Uh, the first is uh, care at, um, and that returns the character at index x. If we instead use s.length, it returns the length of the string. So for instance, my string name set to Angela, if I typed name.length, while it was the characters were held from index zero to index five, it would return a length of six uh, because that zero is, is important. So we can also take a substring and we'll take a look at all of these, but this is just gonna return a portion of the string from index X to just before index Y. The care at method returns the character at an index specified. So if we have a string, S equals Angela, we'll see that it has six different characters. It's made up of that sequence of characters, A, N, G, E, L, and A, starting at index zero, ending at index five, in total having a length of six. Uh, and if we apply the care at method to that string, we see we set character C to be S dot care at two. Uh, what happens is it finds index two and it grabs the character from there. So in this case, index two uh, is, holds the character G. And so what results is something of type car and it holds the character G. A string's length is just the number of characters inside. Um, so Again, if we start with a string, this time we'll call it name, uh, and it's set to Angela, then 
uh, name.length actually returns an integer. And so if we set int namelength to be the result of name.length, um, name, name length will be assigned six. It might be important to think about what happens if you have an empty string. Uh, so an empty string, which is just double quote, double quote, nothing inside, is actually has a length. The length is zero. A substring is a portion of a string. So for instance, if we have a string, again, we're starting with the same one, s equals Angela. Uh, what if we want to take a portion of that out? So for it, this is going to result in a string. So if we have a new string t and we set it to s dot substring one comma three, what we'll do is we're going to start at index one and we'll go up to, but not including index three. So we'll, we'll start at one and we'll go just before three. And so what's held in, in T now is the string N G. Um, and it might seem confusing that the index that I've placed at the bottom below N and G is zero and one, but again, this is a new string. So it doesn't retain that index that it just came from. Um, it's, it's a new string with new indices. And that's it for strings. We'll certainly cover more as we get through the course, but this is what uh, this is what we need to start with. So off we go. Thank you for watching. What should we cover next? Decisions, decisions. So many things to choose from. How about we cover decisions? That's a good decision. Next we'll take a look at decisions. We'll introduce the if statement and look at how we can compare numbers and strings. See you next time.